research team finds a mountain of truth that might probably be the answer to all the unanswered questions. The group stumbles onto a secret passageway, which, both in terms of its architecture and its magnitude, astounds them. They come to the conclusion that smoke bombs are the best way to locate any extra doors or windows. As team finds a mountain of truth, they get ready to investigate the tunnel. The crew discusses how excited and anxious they are to do so, highlighting the significance of the fact that they will be the first people to view it in decades. The group finds upon a curious opening in the road that can be used to access a concealed passageway. They proceed through the tunnel carefully and are astounded by the intricacy of its design and the level of artistry that went into its production. As they continue their exploration, they come across further tunnels and come to the conclusion that this mountain hideout is significantly larger than they had originally thought. Astonished by their discoveries, they make the courageous decision to set off smoke bombs in order to locate any further tunnel entrances or exits that may exist. They have been successful in uncovering yet another entryway, which sheds light on the scope of their mission to investigate the mountain. As they are ready to explore a secret tunnel deep within the mountain, the crew discusses the excitement and anticipation they are feeling. They are convinced that the tunnel houses forgotten history from almost 70 years ago, which piques their interest due to the tunnel's covert and enigmatic character. They emphasize the value of being the first ones to examine something that has stayed undiscovered for decades, considering it to be the genuine treasure, and believe that this gives them an advantage over other people. They go to work with a spirit of resolve, fully aware of the tremendous challenge that lies in wait for them, and anxious to get started. Together with a group of four other investigators, Peter Struzieri, who has a combined experience of 50 years in the treasure hunting industry, and John Casey serve as team leaders for this project. Their mission is to uncover the truth. Grandpa has consented to aid this party of Americans, who are being followed by a video team. Despite the fact that he is somewhat hazy on everything he truly knows, and that he was compelled to help the Japanese when he was a child. There is more to lost gold than simply following urban tales through the woods. The group that is searching for buried wealth includes Martin Flagg, who is an expert on symbols and codes, Brad Carr and Jeremy McMillian, who operate heavy equipment, Manny Paez, who is the team medic, and Martin Flagg. In addition, there is a risk involved because General Yamashita detonated a series of dynamite blasts in order to secure the treasure vaults. As a result, many engineers and prisoners of war were killed in the process. Once the treasure had been concealed, General Yamashita hid it under a mountain in order to cover up almost all of the evidence. Have I mentioned that there are also booby traps set up with noxious gas in order to prevent anyone from claiming their loot? This is one of the primary hooks in the pilot, which focuses on a previous hole, Breach 6, that was built by earlier treasure hunters hunting for a tunnel but was left unfilled. It is said that every hunter who came before got sick, most likely as a result of the poison that the Japanese left behind. Talk about multiple tiers of suspense. During the course of the episode, certain peculiar symbols are found carved into a variety of rocks. These symbols are said to have been left behind for the Golden Lily, a mysterious institution of Japanese royalty that may have initially claimed the jewels. The crew makes the discovery using current technology that there may be a cyanide canister that has been broken at the bottom of the 25-foot hole. As a result, they climb into their heavy machinery in order to exhaust any potentially tainted gas. Treasure hunters are claiming they have unearthed the piles of gold purportedly concealed in the Philippines by Japanese soldiers during World War II. The finding could mark the end of decades of conjecture over the so-called Yamashita treasure gold bars and diamonds worth tens of billions of dollars supposedly seized by the Japanese Imperial Army. Rumor has it that the seized goods were buried in more than 145 underground tunnels and caverns in the Philippines before the surrender in 1945. The purported war plunder seized by Japanese soldiers was under the direction of General Tomoyuki Yamashita, who was in charge of the country's army in 1944. Despite some experts claiming there are no indications of the fabled gold and exquisite diamonds, a new footage has claimed it has uncovered the long-lost treasure. Even though the existence of Yamashita's missing billions has never been verified, the prospect of discovering it has motivated a great number of treasure hunters to put their skills to the test and look for it. The most recent search for the lost gold, which is being reported here, is being conducted 
in what is alleged to have been buried in the Philippines. John followed a series of enigmatic signals that led him to three spots that had the potential to yield fruit, one of which was a waterfall. This waterfall is protecting a secret by keeping it hidden from view. All of the individuals who have previously examined this mountain, including Rick Hurt, father and son mining duo Geo and Levi, father and son geophysicists Max and Colin and Rick Hurt, have all joined the search for the treasure. In the previous year, they made the discovery of a tunnel. It is possible that if they are successful in opening the tunnel, it will be the answer to everything. The waterfall and the location of the tunnel were the two that held the most significance. Levi and Geo, two miners, have been tasked with the responsibility of emptying out the tunnel. The bottom line was that they weren't going to know what the heck was going on until they were inside of this tunnel. This was the only way they were going to find out. This was the only method for them to acquire the necessary information. Two of the miners, Levi and Geo, get an early start the following morning so that they may resume their work on the tunnel. In order to avoid any rockfalls from occurring while they are excavating the entryway, they will need to create a support fence. As a result of the precautions that were taken in the surrounding area, the miners are now free to begin excavating the tunnel entrance without putting their lives in danger. They were so mentally stunted that they were unable to even comprehend what was right in front of them. It was common knowledge that General Yamashita carved up secret passageways and hid treasures deep within the surrounding mountains. They wouldn't have used all of that timber in it if they hadn't planned for it to be long-lasting. That would have been an indication of that. It was time to go inside that area and begin the search for the riches. As the sun rises on the mountain, John gets his first full look at the tunnel for the first time since it was repaired. He had the intention of linking it to a network that would eventually take him to the treasures that were waiting for him there. During the course of World War II, Japan was responsible for the captivity of around 30,000 military personnel and sailors from the United States. It is speculated that Yamashita put those POWs to use in order to construct his massive network of treasure tunnels by utilizing the labor of those POWs. It would appear as though the post and the tube down there both have numbers that are comparable to these. There were numerals painted on the wall that followed the American format. It seemed as if they had been painted on there almost as if they had been bleached onto the post. It appeared as though they had been painted on there. Subscribe now for more thrilling findings and discoveries. Also, to be the first to know when the next post is up, hit that notification bell. John Casey, an American construction contractor, has arrived back in the Philippines with a new team in order to resume his quest for the gold that Yamashita concealed there. Casey believes that Yamashita hid the gold in the Philippines. John is confident, along with a big number of other people, that the Japanese general Tomoyuki Yamashita hid treasure worth billions of dollars that was stolen by Japan during World War II, someplace in the Philippines, possibly included in this mountain. John's certainty is shared by a huge number of other people. The Japanese are the ones who are going to be responsible for carrying the crates all the way up the mountain. It has been reported that an eyewitness stated that unidentified wooden containers were brought up this mountain by prisoners of war and concealed in tunnels which have since been demolished. What scientists just discovered shocks the world. Find out now by clicking on the next video.